Hello, friend, and welcome back to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast, the oldest and longest running Tudor history podcast going since 2009. I'm your host, Heather. Today, we are talking about the jewels of Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary is a figure shrouded in the mists of history, and she remains one of the most compelling and controversial monarchs of the 16th century. She was born into the turbulent world of Tudor and Stuart rivalry. Her life was filled with intrigue, drama, and tragedy. From her early ascension to the Scottish throne as an infant, to her eventual execution by her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I of England, Mary's story is one of power, betrayal, and unyielding spirit. Central to her legacy, beyond the political upheavals and personal trials, were her jewels. Far more than just adornments, these pieces were emblematic of her royal status, tools of diplomacy, and deeply personal treasures that accompanied her through the highs and lows of her life. In this video, we're going to talk about the glittering story of some of Mary's jewels, offering a glimpse into her opulent world and the profound sentiment that these gems harbored. So in the first part, we're going to talk about the French connection. The narrative of Mary is inseparably intertwined with France, where she spent her formative years at the dazzling court of the Valois. These years were not just about political grooming, but also about cultivating a refined taste that mirrored the luxurious French court. Mary's collection of jewels, a testament to this period, was both a reflection of her royal stature and a personal indulgence. Among the treasures she acquired was a remarkable pendant crafted by John Mosman, an exquisite piece made from Scottish gold, symbolizing her connection to her homeland while embracing her French influences. The French court, known for its opulence, played a pivotal role in shaping Mary's aesthetic inclinations. Renowned Parisian jewelers such as the skilled Robert Manjot and, I'm gonna butcher it, sorry in advance, Maturine Lousseau, fashioned pieces that were the epitome of Renaissance artistry, blending precious metals and stones with unparalleled craftsmanship. These pieces were not just accessories, but carried with them the stories of love alliances and Mary's own identity as a queen who navigated the complexities of two realms. Next, we're going to talk about jewels that were symbols of her power and diplomacy. Upon her marriage to Francis II, Mary's jewels transcended personal adornment, becoming potent symbols of power and diplomatic currency. The illustrious Egg of Naples, a magnificent ruby suspended from her necklace, was not just a statement of royal opulence, but also a symbol of the interconnected web of European royalty and alliances. This jewel, along with others like the intricately designed brooches studded with precious stones, served as more than mere embellishments. They were tools of statecraft. Mary adeptly used these jewels in diplomatic exchanges, gifting them to forge and strengthen alliances to reward loyalty or to sway political opinion. Such gestures were a language of their own, conveying messages of favor, intent, and royal grace. In the intricate dance of Renaissance politics, Mary's jewels were her silent envoys, weaving together the alliances, intrigues, and influences that stretched across the courts of Europe. Next up, let's talk about the Scottish regalia. Returning to Scotland, Mary found herself in a realm fraught with religious and political strife, a stark contrast to the sheer elegance of the French court. Yet her jewels continued to play a crucial role, reflecting her royal authority and resilience amidst the turmoil. Pearls, emblematic of purity and regal authority, featured prominently in her Scottish adornment, which echoes the traditional Scottish regalia. These native gems, along with other precious stones, were not merely decorative. They were a visual assertion of her sovereignty and her divine right to rule. Amidst the challenges of her reign, Mary's strategic use of her jewels to maintain and display her queenly dignity was a testament to her understanding of the power of royal imagery. Her efforts to sustain the splendor of the monarchy through her personal appearance even in challenges and times of strife, 
underscored her spirit, the indomitable spirit of a queen determined to uphold her crown's honor and legacy. Next, let's talk about the period when she was imprisoned and intriguing in England. During her imprisonment in England, Mary's jewels became poignant symbols of her lost freedom and sovereignty. Some pieces remained with her, closely guarded treasures that offered a semblance of past glories and personal solace. Others, however, were lost to the demands of survival, sold or pledged to secure the loyalty of supporters or to fund her cause. Among the jewels that retained personal significance during these years were the rings she exchanged with Elizabeth, fraught tokens of the complex bond between these two queens. These rings, often imbued with secret messages and symbols, were not just personal jewels, but also carried the weight of political intrigue and the fragile hopes of a queen in captivity. And now let's talk about the legacy of Mary's jewels. After her tragic end, her jewels scattered across the courts and collections of Europe each piece carrying a fragment of her story. Some of these precious items have been lost to history, their whereabouts unknown, while others are in museums or private collections, treasured as rare connections to a queen whose life continues to captivate. Let's talk about some specific jewels that we still have. There's the Pennycook jewels, traditionally believed to have belonged to Mary. These jewels include a necklace, locket, and pendant, possibly given to one of her ladies in waiting. Lady Mowbray. And you can still see part of these jewels at the National Museum of Scotland. Then there's the Lennox jewel. Although not directly owned by Mary, this jewel is intricately connected to her story through her mother-in-law, Margaret Douglas, Countess of Lennox. The Lennox jewel is a locket filled with symbolic imagery and inscriptions, reflecting the hopes and claims of Mary's son, James VI, to the English throne. This piece is part of the royal collection and is displayed at Holyrood Palace. Then there's the Eglinton Peru, a necklace traditionally believed to have been a gift from Mary to one of her other Marys, Mary Seton. This piece was split into two in the 17th century. One part is in the National Museum of Scotland. The other is held by the Royal Collection at Holyrood Palace. And there's Mary's rosary and crucifix, which was worn at her execution these items are said to have been bequeathed to Anne Dacre, Countess of Arundel, and are kept at Arundel Castle. The rosary and crucifix are significant, of course, as they symbolize Mary's Catholic faith, which played a central role in her life and political narrative. The jewels of Mary, Queen of Scots, offer us a unique window into her past, bridging centuries and bringing the story of a remarkable woman to life. As we reflect on the enduring legacy of Mary and her jewels, we are reminded of the power of objects to evoke the human stories at the heart of history, connecting us with the vibrant lived experiences of those who came before us. All right, my friend, thank you so much for watching. If you are still here watching this video and you made it to the end, I sure would appreciate a press of that like button. And I hope I earned your subscription to my channel where I post videos like this on the regular. Thank you so much for watching. I am so glad I share the planet with you. Don't forget to stay hydrated and drink your water, my friend, and I will be back again very soon.